Oh, hello everyone. How are you doing? My name is Ruth Ann Thompson and I'm with Geek Chic Promotions and this is a Ruse Day Tuesday. Hopefully everybody is doing excellent today and is well rested from WonderCon. Uh, us at Geek Chic had a really fantastic and um, successful uh, WonderCon. We had, uh, we had some great meetings. We had an amazing panel with uh, Mark Wade. So if you missed it, Please check it out. It's on our, uh, we did share it on our Facebook, but we have it on our uh, YouTube channel. So go check it out. It was amazing. Nerd Rage with Mark Wade talking about all the different live action adaptations for um, Superman. So that was incredible to have Mark Wade, and he was so sweet, and he was so, um, he was really candid with everybody, which was awesome. Uh, I, you know, shouldn't have expected less from the incredible Mark Wade. But um, it, was, it was a great experience. And it actually got me really thinking about, because he was very open about um, what uh, brought him to Superman, uh, specifically, and kind of who he is. Um, and so definitely go check, check that out so uh, you, can, you can see all the, uh, the amazing stuff that he said. Howdy, Brandon. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, so what I want to discuss with you guys today, because I'm always really fascinated by um, what draws us to superheroes and all the different types of superheroes, because me personally, and I talked about it on the panel, um, I wasn't drawn to Superman at first as a superhero because he was just too, I know this sounds silly now saying it, he was just too good. Like, I was much more uh, connected with, you know, the X-Men and the kind of sexier, sexy isn't the right word, but of course they're all sexy. But I mean, for me, I didn't connect with superheroes unless they were a little darker or a little anti-hero or maybe didn't start off as heroes and they kind of just were a little, little darker past and that kind of stuff. Um, but I feel that my like uh, love of superheroes has changed dramatically since I was a kid. So I would love for you guys to say, um, you know, the different superheroes that you were first drawn to when you were a kid and if they've changed now. So like, for instance, uh, I mean, out the gate, like, let's go real little. Uh, I was all about the Care Bears, <laughs> and then I was all about um, the Ninja Turtles. I was so ready to like run away and join the Ninja Turtles and fight crime, because to me, even though they weren't, they were very good. They were still teenagers, and they were weird mutated like turtles and yet they still wanted to help out and they, but they were like underground and they kind of had to hide themselves so to me like that's that still kind of clicked for me of not being like the perfect goody to like just everything's so beautiful and like Superman who's just like this perfect looking being and he's just like so good it was hard for me to connect with um, oh and Brandon you said that Superman was definitely your favorite and the, I mean Superman is so much what we need right now and that actually came about us talking about it in the panel and, you know, one thing <clears throat> we nerd raged about is the fact that um, the Superman doesn't kill, period. Like, that's not, that's not who he is. That's not how he rolls. So um, that was something that was very difficult for us to kind of take in with the Henry Cavill version. And, you know, like, we, we do have our, um, uh, I want, again, not anti-heroism, but more vigilante. So you got your bat. So, like, for instance, for me, Batman, I was much more drawn towards Batman and, like, his, like, you know, taking the law into his own hands. But nowadays, like, maybe it's because we we have we have gotten it where we get to experience like the darker, grittier, like comic book movies now. With Chris, I feel like Christopher Nolan was not the first, but he definitely like launched that of like having this super like you know intense that kind of stuff. Um, Brandon Allen also mentions his, then Batman, Spider Man, Hulk, etc. And like Spider-Man is a really good example to me that he's a good kid, but he's a kid, you know? So I was able to connect with him a little bit because, you know, he basically represents the nerd, you know, uh, in all of us that like the nerd kid who was kind of beat up and couldn't get the girl and then he gets superpowers and he's good to go. And like the psychology of what drives us towards certain superheroes is really fascinating to me as well. And I want to discuss with you guys because, you know, there's the people who want to be a superhero there's a person that wants to be saved by a superhero, and there's also the type of people that want to be like the superhero's sidekick, so it's kind of a mix of both, where they want to be a superhero, but they also want somebody that's like there to kind of help them and save the day uh, no matter what. Um, hello, Jean, uh, 
hello. Uh, he says, for him, it's Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men. Okay. And that's, so for everybody, it seems like we're kind of all on the same page where we kind of, like when we first were uh, superheroes, it was kind of very much like Superman, Batman, X-Men, like the big, the big names. Um, and I always noticed, like, as soon as I started getting into X-Men, it was always the characters like Wolverine that I was drawn to, right? So even when I was watching Dragon Ball Z, I wasn't really necessarily, like, so into Goku. I was very into Vegeta, like, that very, you know, the, the dark Saiyan prince and whatnot. And, like, um, and even with the uh, Ninja Turtles, I was more drawn to Raphael because he, like, you know, he was darker and angrier. But he was also hilarious, to, to be frank. Like, in those cartoons, he was always the, the super funny one. But I've definitely noticed that my tastes have changed towards the superheroes. Like, um, not to get into anime too much, because I know I, I, I can go pretty aggressively into it. But you have, like, your originals, which are, like, Goku. And, like, we discussed it on length, that technically he's not a hero. He just likes to fight, and everybody kind of puts on him that he's saving the day. Which I think is a very interesting, like, psychological thing of like why some people are still much more drawn to Goku than they are to like uh, any other uh, hero versus like uh, any of the ones that came after. So like Luffy, who he's, I love One Piece. And if you guys don't know what One Piece is, they're basically pirates, but they're like good pirates. But the funny thing about them is, is even though they are very good and they do a lot of good stuff, they still consider themselves pirates. So they don't like anybody celebrating them or honoring them because they're like, no, we're bad guys. <laughs> like, don't forget, we'll rob and steal um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Jean says, speaking of DBS, I would like to see a fight master Ultra Instinct versus Superman or versus One Punch Man. Okay, Jean, this actually brings up a really good, great point that I love to discuss with you guys because there's so many of the, like speaking of comparing your superheroes, right? There's so many like, like this superhero from this universe versus this superhero from this universe. And to this day, one of my favorite reactions to that was actually, I believe it was Stan Lee because they had asked them like something of like if Hulk versus somebody or, you know, one, one of those questions. And he just said, yeah, it depends on who's writing it because that's completely true. But, because you can argue for days about, like, let's say, because the one that comes up a lot is Superman versus Goku. You can discuss that for days, but because it depends on which universe they're in, right? Because I feel like, obviously, if they're in the Dragon Ball universe, uh, Goku's going to win. But if they're in, you know, the DC universe, Superman's probably going to win, again, depending on who's writing it. Um, but that would be, like, it's always just really fun to kind of test it out. And that's why there's actually a specific game, um, card game I love to play with nerds. If you haven't heard of it, it's called Super Fight. And it's that idea that you build up superheroes and then kind of like, you know, do versus this guy versus this guy. It's great. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, Brandon also says, Wolverine is definitely my favorite X-Men character. And what's interesting about, like, the to me about the Wolverine character is what made it so interesting in the, you know, 80s and 90s for that character is that Wolverine was a mystery. You know, they, you knew he was Weapon X, but you didn't, there's no, like, details really, and you know they put the anime in it, but like, and all details would only come every once in a while, and I feel like it's only in the last 10, 15 years that they've tried to like, put the specific origins to him, and maybe this is me, I'd love to hear you guys' uh, opinion, especially Brandon who loves uh, Wolverine, I feel like it actually lessens the character to find out too much detail about his past, just saying, like, I, I, and the same, same thing with Jessica Jones during the Jessica Jones uh, TV show. I won't spoil it here. We already did a whole, like, uh, nerd rage about it the other day. So, uh, but I feel like going into their past too much actually kind of diminishes the character a little bit. But, yeah, I definitely agree, Brandon, like, that those, the, the Wolverine characters that you see throughout, even in anime or whatever, but those kind of, like, angsty, like, darker char uh, heroes are, like, my favorite. Um... Brandon asks us what my thoughts are on Green Hornet. So that is not, I never saw the movie, I'm going to be honest, and that's not a comic I also, that I read. Um, the the movie just concerned me, just the, the trailers alone, so I didn't end up seeing it. I don't know if anybody else who's watching did see it, so please comment below if you did and what your thoughts are on it. I didn't, that's, that's, not, a, that's not one I, I know that much about. Um, oh, yeah. And then John mentioned, or uh, Mary Jane with her psycho being evil, loved her evil side. Yeah, and that's when I liked Jean Grey the most, too, is when she went to Dark Phoenix. Um, 
again, I just, I guess I like them when they're darker. Uh, but, uh, and something that, that we talked about also on our panel is the fact that um, too many people, uh, there are too many writers and directors, speaking of like the live action adaptations of some of these characters, that if a character is pure good, they just make them very boring. And I think that I have fallen in that trap of either reading or watching a lot of superhero stuff like that. The one time I feel like they've done very well is actually the TV show Supergirl. I feel like they did a really great job of um, making her uh, really like interesting and have a lot of character while still being very good and being very mul multifaceted and interesting because just because you're good doesn't mean you're boring. Um, so I think that takes a lot of good writing and those are the characters that I, I really like the most. Um, and it's interesting when you have a lot of superheroes, especially in the anime world, uh, that are very selfish. So Goku just wants to fight. Uh, Naruto, for a while, it was just all about him like being accepted in the, um, in the community, in you know, the uh, uh, Hidden Leaf Valley or whatever. And so each, it's interesting when, when they have selfish needs, uh, but they're still considered a hero. I always find that kind of interesting. Um, uh, Brandon brings up, uh, gets back to the Green Hornet saying, uh, the movie definitely deviated from the source material with Green Hornet, but it, uh, it had a good comedy. Okay, I'll definitely check that out. There are some like really, really frustrating um, movies that they shouldn't even call the comic book, so Wanted is a great example of that, which Wanted, if you've ever read the comic book, is amazing. It's like rated R or X or something crazy because it's really dark and it's it's, I feel like a comic book that was very necessary where it's about instead of somebody becoming a superhero, like the origin story of superhero, it's origin story of supervillains. And it's really good. So the movie had nothing to do with that whatsoever. It had like one scene that was kind of sort of similar. It should have been called something else. But in the same way that like if you're going to deviate from the comic books that much, my opinion, call it something else. Be done with it. Um, uh, the TV show is really good. Uh... Oh, Brandon says, uh, the reason I asked is because he pretends to be cr a criminal. Oh, interesting. So, uh, I'll definitely check that out because, again, I really like the different uh, deviations of it. Uh, Jean brings up One Punch Man is kind of boring. He kills anybody uh, by simply one punch. And that's what's kind of brilliant about One Punch Man. I think too many people, uh, for those who don't watch anime, a lot of people suggest One Punch Man because it's very popular and it's very fun. But to me, One Punch Man only is good if if you have watched so much anime, because it's actually not an anime really on its own, in my opinion. It's more of an homage to so many different flavors of anime, where it's kind of making fun of itself while still like honoring so many different anime. It's, it's great, One Punch Man, but that's the point, is that he is kind of a boring hero, like most heroes, because he's just so powerful, One Punch will do it, and he's just kind of like a blank personality. It's pretty great. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, Jean asked to do, uh, that. Uh, my thoughts about the uh, manga called Death Note versus uh, oh the remake one. So I for Death Note, I did not read the manga. I did watch the original um, anime and loved it. Um, it took me a while to love it because usually like I didn't understand like what the kind of point of that anime was. But again, like that's that's an anime that if you want. They do a great job of making you root for technically the bad guy. The bad guy is technically the hero in that. So that's a that's a really that's a really interesting one if you want to kind of like your moral compass going everywhere because really it's it's almost like the Breaking Bad way of like how are they going to get away with it versus like rooting for them. It's a it's a good one. And I did not watch the Netflix one. I heard enough terrible stuff. I actually own the two live action movies that were made in Japan years ago, and I have never even watched. Them. Um, they're like on my shelf right there. Never watch them. Um, but even if it's not a superhero, it's kind of interesting. Like, you're right, Shauna, he's like obviously not a superhero, but it's really, it's interesting what draws us. And again, like going back to the psychology of like, we've seen even in our society that, um, you know, it used to be celebrities. It used to be that we used to put them on a pedestal and really look up to them and like make them that they were just basically gods. But now we prefer to kind of tear them down and make them much more like us and compare ourselves to them. And I see that with our superheroes as well. I, I, you know, there's the 40s and 50s superhero, like Golden Era, whatever, Batman, Superman. Uh, even the X-Men, when they first came out, they were very much goody two-shoes and like just very like, 
they were just good and this that the other um and just saving the day no matter what and very like very hard like you know uh, uh very lawful good if we if we're gonna use those terms um and then we saw like the sexier like darker characters coming out in the 80s and 90s and we get like um our all in the marvel universe and dc universe we get um ninja turtles and all that kind of stuff that are just like kind of not anti-heroes but like despite the difficulties that they've had are still heroes and for me after watching um black panther that was that was kind of a very specific turning point for my realization of that i'm, I'm much more drawn now to the very good superheroes like the very pure and like uh lawful lawful good is like a kind of a chaotic not as chaotic good but closer to neutral and lawful good because Man, it's we really need it <laughs> right now. Like, and that's and to me, that's where every superhero has ever come from, is that we, it's of a time that we needed that specific superhero. So when we had Superman first came out, is because we were in the middle of the Cold War. We were we were being like we were scared for our lives every day, and and we just needed this alien just come in who's just so good and just to save us, just save us. Like we have so little like hope left in us we needed to like that hope to be embodied um versus like when we get later on into like x-men when x-men came we needed the heroes that were for civil rights you know whether you were um whatever skin color you were whatever sexual orientation you were anything like you were born that way and you needed that hero you needed to see yourself in those heroes and now it's almost come full circle where things are so rough right now like we need we need our supermans we need our black panthers just to be good and like save us um and john is talking about the uh back to the death note he says i really prefer the original i watched the trailer of the new one it sucks <laughs> yeah i didn't even watch the trailer not gonna lie um i just went i just skipped right over that uh but it's uh it is it and i feel like i don't know about you guys I almost feel like there's too many, too many of our superhero TV shows and movies are getting too dark and gritty. Like, um, and that's something we discuss again on our panel about Superman is that like, that's not, we need to get back to that brighter, um, and more, uh, you know, hopeful future. And we even discussed it when talking about Star Trek, cause that's the thing is that this new Star Trek discovery is fun and it's dark and it's gritty, but we already have so much dark and gritty and we have, you know, our Game of Thrones, we have our Walking Dead and we have all that kind of stuff. Like we, we kind of need some hope right now. So for, for me, definitely my, uh, my tastes in superheroes have, have shifted. Of course, I still love my Wolverines. I still love my Vegetas. I still, you know, they're still always right here for me, but, uh, it's definitely like with everything going on and what we kind of need right now, is more Superman, and I really, I hope, and I need to get back into reading uh, Superman. I don't, uh, I'm not sure who's writing it right now, but um, I hope that our our movies and our TV shows and all that kind of stuff can get a little, can get a little brighter because we definitely we need that right now. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, Brandon also says the American Death Note tried to compress too much story into one movie. That's another problem that you have, um, and you lose all sorts of character development and, I mean, obviously storyline. Um, I kind of feel as though, um, which movie was it that, uh, oh, the, the one anime, To spe speaking on the fact of anime being turned into, um, and actually uh, another version of not an anti-hero, but kind of a more um, coming out of the ashes and despite all the difficulties being a hero is uh, Tokyo Ghoul. If you guys haven't seen that, very good. Um, the anime, I've not read the manga, uh, but the anime is great. And they also did do a live action where I think they, it's the best of them trying to capture an anime in the, in the last few movies that Japan has done. Um, I feel like it's the best um, to choose that. And I don't know about you guys, like I'd love to hear from you if you feel it's more important for you as a consumer and audience member to connect with the superhero or just have the superhero be the, the type of hero that we need. Um, Cause I feel like there's definitely like a, a mix of both cause in, in our daily lives, we all need to be our own superheroes, but there is like that 
that wish of just someone to just, just be good, just help me, just save me. <laughs> that would be great. Um, uh, already see uh, the live action. That movie was so uh, so cool to watch. Okay, I'm glad you liked it, John. It was a really good one. Um, and Sal asked if I did watch the last uh, episode of DBS. I did. If you guys check on my Facebook page, uh, just Ruth Ann Thompson or, um, you know, facebook.com backslash uh, nerdgirlru, uh, you can see that I, I live stream watching it from my hotel room in, uh, at WonderCon because it was that good. I had to, I had to check it. Um, yeah, John mentioned about Tokyo Ghoul, yeah. Um, David says, Logan kind of struck me as a symbolic death of sorts of the gritty uh, destructionist superhero films. I could see that. I could definitely see that. It would be nice, even though like I absolutely love Logan, absolutely love that movie. And I, and I feel like it was the, the one time they got the old man Logan like really nailed it. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that would be a really great like succinct, like just that's that now we're done with that. But I think I think executives are making too much money off of the dark and gritty like superhero stuff. I don't I don't think they'll let it go. But I think Logan is the one that got it just right because there's just so much emotion and yeah, it's very difficult to watch, but it doesn't feel like they were forcing like to me Batman versus v Superman is them trying to force things to be darker and grittier. I mean when because I think it was that movie, right, that Batman picks up like a gun and shoots at people and I was like, no, 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 that's not what he does, no. Um, so, I don't know if you, if you guys agree, but, um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I just saw, I didn't read all the articles today about what's holding back the next um, uh, video in the X-Men uh, movie series, so we shall see about that, but, um, but yeah, uh, It'll be interesting to see how much farther, because I don't think they're, um, our boy uh, Hugh Jackman is going to play, um, uh, is going to play Logan much longer. So that'll be interesting, like you said, David, if that's kind of like the end of that kind of genre and we go back to kind of the brighter, uh, more comic booky uh, versions of things. Because I just rewatched. It's a total mistake, guys, but I just rewatched Batman Forever and Batman and Robin last night. Oh, goodness. But in some ways, I kind of, like, it's almost better to me than the... Okay, just hear me out. I'm going to I'm gonna say blasphemy right now. But in some ways, I feel like it's almost better than the Nolan ones because it, it so hearkened to, like, the really goofy um, Adam West Batman where it's just, like, shark spray and that kind of goofiness. And it was kind of fun seeing it so bright and so silly and so cheesy. Uh, compared to all this very dark and dangerous and you know that kind of stuff. So I don't know if you guys agree um, uh, Brandon Allen says um, uh, uh, Batman carried a gun when first well when he was first created he was a, um, a detective so So yeah, but I mean what the ca character is now he's not he, the whole thing is that he doesn't use guns like that's his whole thing so I, I agree with you Brandon like there is like somewhere he carried a gun yada yada um, <laughs> Leonard says why why did you rewatch them Jim Carrey as um, the Riddler was really interesting to watch and I didn't realize that that's true that Drew Barrymore is um, one of uh, two faces girlfriends like she's the blonde one for the for the normal face side uh, and just man, having both of those characters and those actors playing villains in one movie, that was that was a lot. And and Uma <laughs> I feel like both those movies have such crazy like uh villains and I was like I tried to imagine them even trying to do like um a Mr. Freeze or a uh poison ivy in the new like in this universe of Batman. There's just there's like no way. Um uh, Jean says, Hugh is the, the Wolverine. He can't be replaced. It's like the horror movie El Elm Street. Freddy Krueger is Robert uh, Eglund and no one else. So what's funny, though, about um, Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine, and I was discussing this with somebody else, is that for me, like when um, Hugh Jackman was first cast as Wolverine, and I didn't really, you know what? The only thing I knew about him before that was that he was on Oklahoma and Broadway because... I went to musical theater school and we'd have to watch the tape of that. So I was like, oh, it's a, it's a guy from Oklahoma. It's going to be Wolverine? What? My first reaction is, is he's too tall and he's too pretty. 
Like that was legit like my first reaction when Hugh Jackman, and I still feel the same way. He is definitely the, the Hollywood sexy version of Wolverine. It would be interesting if they went with somebody, because they're obviously going to unfortunately recast. I mean, they're going to do a reboot. We see it come, it's happening. Like it'll, it'll, it might not be in the next five years, but it's going to happen. So it'd be interesting to see if they go with somebody um, who, you know, I would picture as much more um, appropriate for the character of Wolverine in the comic books, like just like shorter and grizzlier and hairier and just like a little pile of muscle. Uh, so we'll see. Um, uh, Brandon Allen says, Shazam looks like it's going to be very faithful to the source material. Yeah, I've been really uh, interested in seeing uh, what happens with Shazam. I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was like back in 2013 or somewhere around there, because DC, as not great as they've been with their live action stuff, I think it was back in 2013 or so, is when they started doing uh, amazing work with their, um, their cartoons, actually, and making their cartoons PG-13. And I remember seeing at one of the uh, conventions, Shazam, their uh, cartoon version of Shazam, and I was like, okay, like, it's pretty good. Like, it seemed like they were faithful to it, had some fun with it, but kept it kind of, like, rough and tumble because they cursed and stuff, guys. That's why it's PG-13. So, we'll see. I, I hope that they do well with the, uh, with the new one, uh, with the live-action one, for sure. Um... David then uh, says, so what you're saying is Arnold's Mr. Freeze is better than Ledger's Joker? <laughs> Let's kick some ice. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Um, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but it's, uh, it's, the, it's just the cartoony version. Because, like, I, I, I obviously, like, I love um, our latest version of Spider-Man, the Spider-Man Homecoming. I adore that movie. I, th I thought it was a perfect way of taking a older character uh, and making it very contemporary but staying true to like what the character is. Uh, I thought they did really well, but I do still love me the Sam Ra the first two Sam Raimi uh, Spider-Man movies. I love those movies and like they're very cartoony and you know it's obviously a 30 something year old playing a uh, high school student. But it's still fun, you know, and that's and I feel like we're missing and that's the thing that like Avengers and Marvel Marvel in general has been able to do is keep the fun in with what's going on. Um, I mean, and Joss Whedon, uh, say what you will, but I will always fanboy all over him because he's, he's an amazing writer and can handle, like, that many characters and keeping things light while keeping things serious, all that kind of jazz. Um, uh, Leonard says, more gruff. And I'm assuming you're talking about um, the Wolverine character. Yeah, it would be nice to have, like, a super gruff, like little little muscular man who's playing Wolverine. I think it'd be a nice twist from, you know, we've gotten so used to having this very good-looking Hollywood like version of Wolverine. Um, and then and then Brandon says he could be Wolverine. He's five eight. I feel like that's still a little too tall for Wolverine. In my opinion, I feel like uh, Wolverine should be about five six. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's uh, that's where I feel like he lives. I feel like he's a he's a shorter guy. Um, Oh, Brandon Allen brings up Gotham seems to be doing a fine job of doing Dark, Mr. Freeze, and Poison Ivy. So, I have stopped, watch I stopped watching Gotham probably three or four episodes in. I'm not going to lie. I did the same thing with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Everybody says I should get back into it, but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I understand better as what can still be super fun without having to have superheroes in it. But to me, Gotham, I don't, I don't need to see a little kid version of Batman. That's the way. That's how I felt about Anakin Skywalker. I didn't want to see him little saying yippee and shit. Like I wanted the awesome, dark, cool stuff. There, I don't. Eh. But if you guys suggest it, I'll go back and watch Gotham. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, Mortanda, sorry if I'm not saying your name right. Wants my T-shirt. I know. I love this T-shirt. This is one of my favorites. Sorry, uh, yeah, I just came from a photo shoot with um, Robot Honor Dog, and so I'm still wearing this. Ah, okay, thank you, Brandon. Uh, in the comics, Wolverine is 5'3", so yes, he is quite a little man, so uh, I'm totally fine with uh, us getting a much smaller, like, more comic book accurate Wolverine would make me really happy. Um, <laughs> All right, David says, uh, after Batman 1989, The Crow was probably the first comic book film I really got into as a kid. There have been talks of a remake for years, 
but now apparently they're going to start shooting with Jason Momoa as Eric uh, Draven. Yes, I have heard that same thing, and I 100% agree. Because um, I feel like when I was a kid, Batman, I love Batman, the first Batman and Batman Returns. I was hooked as a kid, and that's that's what really hooked me to Batman. And then obviously I watched all the cartoons and um, all that kind of stuff that really locked me in. Uh, and then The Crow, which was really good. And I don't know. I don't know about remakes, guys. I know they're going to happen. I know they are. I just, and I mean, it is Jason Momoa, so I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I'm really, I'm really hoping it'll be good. So fingers crossed. But uh, it, yeah, again, it's interesting how even um, the way we depict these characters now has become very different. You know, because when, when, like I said earlier, when we needed these superheroes and they were created, like Superman, like Batman, like X Men, like, and obviously, I'm always saying talking about like the really big ones, Spider Man and Fantastic Four and. You know, whichever whichever one really like connected with you, uh, they definitely were born of a very sp specific time. And what I'm worried about with some of these blockbuster movies is that they're that they're taking them and they're trying to force them all to be one thing. They're all to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like they're all they're all trying to force them to be Christopher Nolan's Batman. Like I feel like they're they're trying to make them all very contemporary and very dark, even if that's not necessarily where the character came from. Uh, that's why I like the fact that we still have different iterations of stuff, obviously comic books, but also getting into like the TV shows of S Supergirl and um, now like there's the Gifted that I really like a lot for the X-Men universe. So it's it's really interesting kind of seeing how, how we can kind of shift each of these characters that have been around for so long. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, Victor. He says, do that. No way. I'm going to see you live for once. Yeah. What up? It's me. I'm here. And you're here, too. Uh, Marco Lopez. I've come into this late. It's an argument about superhero films becoming gritty, and they shouldn't be because I agree. Shazam is going to be be the best. Yeah, uh, Marco, so it's kind of a mix. Uh, we kind of uh, got off topic. How we started off talking about is um, basically the different types of superheroes and what we were first drawn to as kids and what we're drawn to now. And, uh, but it kind of, it did, it, the conversation turned into, uh, oh, hey, like, it's just like, everything's become super dark and gritty, even though that's not all superheroes and what they mean. And maybe that's another reason that why I'm still like super drawn to anime is because, yeah, there's the dark, gritty anime, but then there's still like the super fun, like ridiculous ones, like One Piece and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I, and I feel like there's just like more of a balance there. Um, oh, this is a great question. John asks, uh, oh, what? What's your favorite Joker, speaking of the Batman universe? Um, you know, it's, I love, it depends on, because obviously I feel like Jack Nicholson's Joker wouldn't work in Christopher Nolan's, and, and Heath Ledger wouldn't work in, you know, um, in that first Batman movie. But I feel like the, both of those Jokers are just incredible. And then even, like, the... Uh, Adam West Batman, like his Joker, and I'm terrible for not remembering the actor's name because I know that's a big deal. Uh, even even him, like that's a very different than all three of them, and but it works very much in that universe of the Batman universe, if that makes sense. Because yeah, there Jack Nicholson, and maybe it's because that was the first Joker I ever saw, and I love it. And then of course the cartoon having uh, Mark Hamill. That's a totally different flavor of Joker, but I think for me, like the one that I, that I, whenever I think of Joker, I think of Jack Nicholson's Joker. I don't know if I'm the only one who does that. Um, Brandon agrees with me, the, the Gifted is amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one coming back. I still need to see um, Legion. I know everybody's pushing, even uh, Brandon brought it up. Gotta see Legion. I know, I know, and it's coming back on Tuesday, so I gotta like binge that really quick. Um, South says, are you going to see Avengers Infinity War opening night uh, and do a review? I probably, I'm going to tr absolutely try seeing it open that opening night. If I don't, I'll watch it like as soon as I can. And 100% I'll do a whole review. If it's not uh, with uh, Chris for the uh, Nerd Rage, which I doubt it will be. I'm hoping it's so good we don't, we don't have to Nerd Rage about it. Uh, but if not, the Tuesday, Tuesday, right after the opening weekend of um, Infinity Wars, I will 100% do a, a review about it and talk about it with you guys. Um, uh, thank you, Brandon. Uh, 
Cesar Romero was his name, thank you. And Brandon also asked, uh, did I watch Krypton? So I haven't watched Krypton. I'm gonna be honest, I might not watch Krypton. I'm gonna see, <laughs> I'm gonna kinda see uh, everybody's take on it because, uh, and, and somebody made a really great point of it the other day about why they're not gonna watch Krypton because it's, it's still about Superman, even though Superman isn't in it because like one of the main villains is coming back in time to destroy the Kal-El's bloodline, or Superman's bloodline. So, I don't know. I don't know. I've been hearing very mixed things. You know, I've been hearing uh, people love the Brainiac, that they've done a really good job of, of him in uh, Krypton, so we'll see. Um, oh yeah, Jean uh, agrees with me that it's for him as well. It is Jack Nicholson too. <laughs> Welcome to the club. He's, I think, the most accurate to, to uh, the anime, yeah. Um, John also says Krypton is like Terminator. Yeah, it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it, it would be really nice to get more, to get Superman back, you know. So hopefully either in the comics, in um, the DC, either the TV shows. I don't mind the Superman that's on Supergirl, but I feel like they have to aggressively downplay him and downplay his powers because it's, the show is called Supergirl. So it's my opinion. But um, I totally kept talking for longer than I meant to, guys. I love chatting with you guys. Um, yeah, so we're going to be still very busy here with Geek Chic. Um, so this Saturday, uh, we're going to Nerd Rage. We're actually going to be in San Diego on a, on a boat, I believe. It might be even pirate-themed boat. So just be prepared. We'll have a, 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 nerd, a nerd Rage on a pirate ship. And then uh, the next time you will see us will be, the weekend after that, we'll be at PAX East. So anybody who is at PAX East, come visit us. Uh, we'll be working with Skybound for their activation space as well as their booth. And then we have a lot of shows in May, so we're keeping really busy. So thank you all so much for joining, and uh, stay nerdy, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.